Hey everybody, welcome back to the Movie Cranks, and once again, I am Mike, and this I'm guy Larry. here is Larry. <laughs> and tonight we got to see the Ryan Johnson debut of Knives Out. I think you have something you want to tell me. It's a whodunit. You don't want to spoil it. And pretty much, that describes what this movie is. It's a whodunit. Yeah. You know? it's You have a wealthy family. You have a suicide, you have a will, and a possible murder. Yeah, it's a murder that they've brought in this detective or sleuth to of Daniel Craig to figure out what has happened with this crazy eccentric family <laughs> who are backstabbing assholes. They're all rich backstabbing assholes, and We've kind of seen this recently in another movie. Yes. I, there's been a couple movies this year. Ready or Not. Ready or Not had that feel, even though it yes. is a horror movie. I forgot my gun. Why don't you just use mine? Mr. Lodomas, I just saw her running. Oh my god! Oh! Oh! oh, fuck your fucking family! You're just another sacrifice. Do you think this is a fucking game? Yes, I didn't see. Remember? It does have a lot of that feel with the wealthy family, and also murder mystery on Netflix, which I not even. No, no, that's this. still that's still. I mean, it is a murder mystery, yeah. like yeah. it says, but it just I, lacked you, the star power. You can't this. compare it to this no. film at all because this one I thought was actually really good. Let's just talk about the cast. Yeah, Daniel. Craig. Start with Daniel Craig and Anna Dan Armas. If I got that right. You have Christopher Plummer does a great job. He actually had a bigger part in this movie than I thought he would. Yeah, so did Chris well, Evans. Chris Evans comes in the middle and yes. finishes off the movie. It's fantastic. He, he is another great role in this movie. I was expecting him a little earlier in the movie. I felt like when he came in, I was like, oh, I forgot Chris Evans is in this Yeah, it, he came in at the halfway point, and me and yeah. you were both kind of shocked. Like, oh my gosh, we forgot he was even in this. Yeah. So it did come off a little weird. But... There was a few that really took the cake on this and made it a real well-rounded show. Because you had these characters that had to play these parts. And Michael Shannon yep. had to play like the one of the sons that was feeling like he was being left out. He was trying well, to run his side of the family business. Yeah, well, the business you know, basically is the father is a writer. He right? has a big book publishing company. Big writer. Yeah. And Michael Shannon's character is kind of running it for him. Right. So when things go down, he's not too happy. Yeah, and they all have their little things, like some are getting money under the table, some yeah. are ripping him off, um, others are basically using him for his yeah. power and his house. I yeah. mean, all this stuff. And then you got you always got the one that's lazy, doesn't want to work, doesn't want to do anything, yeah. just likes the benefits. And needless to say, Dad had enough. And that's how this all starts. Yes. Is the will comes out, the knives come out, which is appropriate <laughs> because it's it's essentially a, a family gone wrong. And you have this house guest, well, I should say the nurse, who is basically, what's amazing is she ends up being the lead, which I didn't yeah. expect. Yeah. Um, Ana de Armas is gorgeous she and is so, she is really so good at what she does yeah she's actually a gorgeous woman who is a pretty good actor talented yeah i mean we first saw her that i remember of in blade, blade runner, runner and i remember walking out of that going i like i like the girl that was like the projection she was like super hot <laughs> yes <laughs> well and and she didn't have a huge role in that but in this she was the one you were following around and, and kind of leading you in the story yeah, this clue-based story of yeah. like a whodunit, like you said. And it's there's a lot of good scenes with her because she plays this character that's real innocent, sweet, and just gets caught that's, up. That's her. And her personality comes off that way. I mean, she, she seems like that kind of person yeah. and pulls it off perfectly. I'm saying right now, I don't know too much of what she's been in before this. Like I said, Blade Runner. But she's got I another this, movie coming she's out. She's got some movies Craig. coming out now. Exactly. She's going to be in the next James Bond. Yep. But I felt like this was really a good breakout role for her. I did too. I mean, if you go into this expecting Daniel Craig to be the lead, don't. Daniel Craig is like one of the, basically like the detective or well, yeah. police. He is one of the main characters. I did feel like some people were saying that he wasn't really a main character. Was I like half feel half. like he's, he's up there. 
and the status I, was cursed. I felt like she did steal some of the spotlight from him. Yeah, though. definitely. It, it was weird because Daniel Craig's this really talented older actor, and she just comes in and sort of they play off each other. They they work together almost. Yes, yeah. actually, like a buddy really buddy thought, cop movie. Almost. I'm gonna say right now, I thought Daniel Craig was actually really good in this movie. The story's gonna change throughout this movie a few times. Yeah, there's a lot of twists, and he's the main reason why you don't catch the twist until. Right. You get it at the end, and that's that's the that's the weird thing. This is the kind of movie that subversion and misdirection and all that stuff is great. And Ryan Johnson excels in that. Yeah, he now, did a real good job. This here. one, I think he did much better direction and storyboarding and, and putting the whole story together than he did with the Last Jedi. Oh, of course, the story wasn't the number one thing for me. That I walked away with this movie. I like the humor. I love. The humor. Yeah. I mean, I laughed. I heard the audience laughing several times. There's not a ton of it, but when it's there, it every hits. joke hits. Yeah, it, there's a lot of little hidden little insider jokes yeah. that the family makes, you know, like calling each other certain names. But you all love twisting the knife into one another. Up your ass. Oh, very nice. Matter of fact, oh eat shit. How's that? Eat shit. Eat shit. Eat shit. Smug smile. Definitely eat shit. And they do certain things that each character has like little, you know, tricks and things they do. But that's what's great is the humor. Everyone seems like family. It feels like a real family unit, which is great because these people acted like brothers and sisters and moms and dads. I mean, Don Johnson plays an awesome character in this. I mean, I love Don Johnson. Yeah, even the small roles. character, even the small roles, yes, do a great job. Don Johnson, yeah, and Frank Oz was in this as the attorney, <laughs> the Yoda, the Yoda man himself, Fozzie uh-huh. Bear, everybody. Yeah, it's Don, uh, Frank Oz is in this movie as as the family attorney. Yeah, and he, it's not a large scene, but it's just so neat to see him. Yeah, I mean, in a full role, like yeah, a, where he's actually playing himself. himself. He, he's yeah, him. He's not a a puppet or a character. Christopher Plummer was the sweet, aging, wise yeah. old man that he always plays well. I mean, I loved him in this. He he was a, he was like the smart caretaker of the whole family, this yeah. god almighty mess of a family. And and knowing what his character was gonna be to begin with in this movie, like I said earlier, he's a big role in this movie. Yeah, it's he's not constantly all about him being gone. Yeah. You know, there's lots of flashbacks going on throughout this. And I thought his role was well done, well acted. Well, in the beginning, they did the way this movie starts off, and it's no spoiler, is they set it up by you're right into the interview stage. I am Detective Lieutenant Elliot, and this is Trooper Wagner. We just want to ask a few questions. Well, we understand the night of his demise, the family have gathered to celebrate your father's 85th birthday. How was it? The party? Pre my dad's death? Oh, it was great. It's them, the family members, being interviewed one-on-one with the police. So what's nice is you learn a lot about them, their personalities, their quirks, Mm -hmm. their lies, everything starts coming out right at the beginning. How they all affect the family. Yeah, so you get this cool introduction to everybody. That you don't get in a lot of movies, you know, nothing nothing this smart, I'm saying. Yeah, when a movie starts off this quick, a lot of times you don't know who's who, right. but you know everybody here. Yeah, it's almost like you've known these people. It, that's how well you get to know them. It's like, it's like watching a TV show for like a year or so, where you get to know all the characters, but they had to do this in a small two-hour window. Yeah, and speaking of characters, there's a couple other small characters in here. The guys that play the policemen. Yeah, and I like them, though. too. I thought they did a really good job. Lakeith Stanfield was yeah. one of them. He had a fun, comedic role of this sketchy... Like, he wasn't sketchy. He was like a... He didn't believe yeah. in what was happening. He was just constantly going, Oh, my God, what is... I don't believe any of them. Even the smallest characters have a part to play. Everyone's yeah. a part. Even the housekeepers. Everyone's a part of the whole story, and everything fits together. And you'll be satisfied with the ending. You'll be very happy because our audience was applauding, which God. is rare. Yeah, it's very rare. And I, oh my that, God. to me, it ended just with a really good laugh. I mean, that was that was one of the best things yeah. like I said in the movie. It's just it makes you laugh. 
and ma- you're entertained. It's just a fun movie. I mean, to watch. we're in the heartland of the Midwest, and we've been to thousands of movies. And out of all the movies we've ever seen, very few Midwestern people get up and start applauding at the end. And let's just talk about <laughs> what I think this movie's going to do. Money wise, I, I think, think it's going to make a really lot well. of money because we went to the theater. It was that, packed. That nobody ever goes to. Usually, we, we even posted our pictures on Facebook at the theater. Empty. I mean, it's just us sitting in the theater alone. This one it's was always full. empty, and it was filled. And I, I, when I walked around the corner, I was like, "Oh my god, our seats are taken. This isn't fair." Yeah, but, it was you know, incredible nice how many people that turned out, and I'm happy. I think. He should get recognition for this. Maybe this will help quell some of the anger and hate that came after Last Jedi. Mm-hmm. I doubt it. But <laughs> at least this shows the man isn't a fraud. Yeah. He can put together a really well-crafted movie with great characters. But negatives, I will get into a couple. I only have a couple. Yeah, me too. Very minor. And one is, I really, I know you liked it. To me, the music was a little off. It was a little too slow. And it added to the slow burn. Right in the middle half, where it started to drag just for probably about 30, 20, 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. But other than that, it picked right back up, got me right back on board, and I was good to go. I mean, I I kind of... It was kind of just background music. It wasn't that crazy orchestrated action like we just got with the 90s action mm-hmm. kind of music. We didn't get anything like that, but it, I thought it was subtle enough, and I thought it went with... The whole murder mystery it feel. Definitely, I will agree. It does yeah. go with the theme. That, it goes so well with the theme. That basically, this is really music wise the only choices they had. Yes, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, I mean, and it's a it's a cool house. The settings are great. Um, the house itself is where almost ninety nine percent of the movie takes place, and it's yeah. a cool haunt. It's like like a, not a haunted mansion. I said haunted mansion. <laughs> oh, right. It was not. in the same kind of level of ready or not. It's just a beautiful. It had secret passageways yeah. and it had all kinds of neat stuff, you know. And I really liked the house design and the chair of knives. Yes, <laughs> and, and, and how was, that comes yes. and how that comes to play at some point in this movie. But I don't know. I mean, uh, so my negatives were there was a few moments where it was slowing down, to where it's a two hour and fifteen minute movie. It does slow down a few times to a point where I was like, okay, let's get this going. Come on, let's let's start this up again, and. I felt like some of that, like there was some scenes that were unnecessary, but all in all, I really enjoyed this. The family is truly desperate. When people get desperate, the knives come out. This is a twisted web. And we are not finished untangling it. Not yet. I keep waiting for the big reveal. All of them lied to me. There is one guilty party behind it all. Yeah. Larry, what would you give Knives Out for your final rating? Real easy. I thought it was a well liked movie. Uh, cinematography was also really good. Yes, yes it was. Uh, music was a little down point for me. The humor was right on point. So I'm going to go ahead and give this one B+. Plus. Okay. That's a good sort. Um I'm a sucker for these movies. I really do like something that pushes your I, brain. I do think that's part of maybe why I do go a little on the sc- lower on the score, maybe. I don't know where you're going to be at yet. But just whodunit movies aren't totally my, my thing. I mean, for someone that grows up watching a lot of like Law and & Order and all those kind of like detective shows and like CSI, things like that, they're going to have a great time with this because it is sort of like a CSI. There's evidence, there's questioning there's interrogating the family members and all that stuff and i i really enjoyed all that i loved seeing the family members break i loved seeing them like having like getting into arguments you know uh, i loved all that stuff um there was a few slow scenes but i was willing to put that behind me i would have to say i would give this movie probably an a minus yeah, I thought you were going to be a little higher on it than me. But it was a really good movie. Everybody should probably go check it out. Everybody should. We highly recommend it. It's worth watching in the theater. Um, seeing it on the big screen with Colette and, I mean, just all these great actors. It's just, it's not easy to put the movie like this together with all these people yeah. involved. I, Jimmy Lee Curtis was fantastic. I mean, as this... <laughs> Grouchy, rich oh, wait. woman. I that... forgot to talk about her. You know who's fantastic? Who? 
the old lady. The I grandma? mean, she just has a small part, but oh. man, every time you see her, you just there was laugh. there was humorous parts to her. There was this very old grandma that was in the movie that played. His mom, <laughs> who must have been 110. I remember the cop was just great. like, how old is she? And Jamie Curtis is like, we have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to laugh at that oh, because God. I was thinking that would be so funny if they had no clue. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, get out there. Enjoy this. Uh, it's a good Thanksgiving. Perfect time to release this. Yep. Thanksgiving so, right before Christmas. Holidays come and check it out. Yep. So anyway, uh, guys, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. We need all the support to get up to 1,000 here real soon. Our Facebook page is hitting 2,500 soon, which is great. Uh, met some fans last night even of the show, so we appreciate it, and we appreciate all the support from you guys. Larry? That's all we got for right now. So until next time, we'll yep. see you later. We'll see you.